Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. Welcome back to Projections. Oh, We're back. It's been a while. Tis the season, Norm. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we are back and hopefully with some more regular episodes and coverage uh, as we come toward the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, VR has been out for how many years now? It's like the fourth year. It's been a while since the early, early days. Since now it's still just the late early days. <laughs> right. But the Oculus Go was released this year and we figured at the price point that it's at with the so giftable. I imagine there'll be a lot of people receiving one this month for various holidays. Or even you may have purchased one for Black Friday. Mm -hmm. It was there for $180. And there's some new, new content for the Go. Uh, we're going to talk about two of those in depth today. Uh, one is a game that is interesting because it is a asymmetrical VR gaming experience. That's true. And there's been other games like this. There is even one, a great one on the go. Uh, don't touch, or what is it? Everything will blow up? <laughs> uh, I keep talking and nobody explodes. That's it, which is an excellent game You're with person in VR is trying to defuse a bomb and everyone outside of the game has to assist them and they have to relay information back and forth in order to beat the clock. And this new game called Covert is essentially that but wrapped into a story-based experience where the person in VR and the person on the uh, flat screen, an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device, plays the role of their hacking assistant. It's now, the person on the computer. Exactly. In, in every you know, science fiction, spy movie, yeah. it's the person back at home on the computer. And they really had to make almost two games for this to work. Right, like two views into the game. Yeah. Because it is actually the full one gigabyte no matter what platform you download to. So I have a feeling that it's just one big package and you get one view on the flat screen and one view in VR and it's all the same, you know, actual assets. Well, let's talk about the experience in the headset sure. first. Now, we should start from their first game. So their first game is called Eclipse and it won a few, you know, awards for, for game of the year in VR space, like on Gear VR. And it's okay. Like, I, a lot of people dig this game. I think it's fine. Like, you walk around the world, you do this very gentle jump mechanic, and you're exploring and scanning things. And it's, it's a gentle experience. There's nothing, like, super riveting about it. It's not an action game. Yeah. Um, but you can see some of that DNA in Covert, and I think they brought some of the best elements. But Covert is so much more immersing and interesting to me because of this co-op mechanic. And I think it really needs that co-op because just on the VR side, it is a first-person spy game where you're pulling off heists, essentially. Mm -hmm. You're rescuing people from, from prisons. It's a very low fidelity, very plodding experience because you're on a three-doff headset. You're using the controller to kind of hold the, the touchpad down to move, either swivel chair or double tap. So if it was just a singular VR headset game, I wouldn't want to play it at all. Right. No, you're right. And, and three DOF games are going to struggle with this. Like, I actually don't think that there is a killer app game for the Oculus Go, right. Gear VR, or any kind of 3 dot headset. Like, there's just not enough there in order to make a compelling experience. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that said, within those constraints, there are these good games, and yeah. this is one of them. And, and, but this game is not good necessarily because of the immersion that you get from using the controls and that, that whole feedback loop. It's about the experience you have with someone else. 100%. So, so when you start out, you're just in a building and you, you can grapple in VR, and then the person who's assisting you can move things around for you like a conveyor belt or a surface. And you need that, that, you know, that cooperation in order to traverse through the world. And it starts like something as basic as that. Later on, like there might be a pad or a floor covered in a bunch of squares, and they know which one of those are gonna kill you by, with electrocution and which ones are safe. So mm -hmm. they're telling you, go two forward, go two left, go one back, go one to the left, go forward three, and so you're just relaying that way. And, and the person on the iPad or the phone, they see the game world in a very blueprint style, stylized way, just top down. Right. You can zoom in, you can pan, but you can't tilt. And I have icons on the, on the tablet representing things like the cameras that can look around the security guards mm -hmm. or the objects that I can spotlight for the person in VR uh, to relay information like what's dangerous or what key code to put in. And they've incorporated a bunch, a good number of these kind of mini game yeah. experiences that require two people to complete. The best ones are the ones that really require a back and forth. Like there's one where you are, um, you're confronted in VR with four buttons and the person on the, uh, on the tablet. Tablet, tablet has four buttons of their own. Numbers 
and letters. And then you have to say, if you see one light up, the person tells the other person, hit four. And then you're telling me, hit D. And I say, hit three. And so it's a back and forth. It's call and response. And much like um, the other game that we mentioned, you can relay a serial number to a keypad to the person on the flat screen, and that person can tell you, okay, then it must the passcode must be 3421. Yeah, yeah. Or you come to a bunch of wires you have to diffuse, and the question from you, the hacker, is, are there more than two red wires? And I'll say, yes, there are, and then you'll know, yep. you'll be able to tell me what to do. So it's really that back and forth that's a lot of fun. Also, you don't have to be in the same room. Yeah, that's, that's the other interesting thing, is that when you and I were playing, we were in our own houses, and the whole thing is synced up with, with a four-digit code. So the person in the headset is essentially the server, mm -hmm. gives the other person a code, and on the tablet, I type in that code, and we're connected, and it works. Uh, you played it at home with your family, and the latency was no problem. Like, no problem at all. Like even the voice that is in both devices is synced up pretty pretty well, mm. um, and it's probably more fun to play next to each other. But it's nice that you can play across the internet. The only problem with doing it that way is you can't hear each other right. by default. It doesn't use VoIP in game or anything like that, yeah. which is an interesting decision. Not that hard to solve. You just do a FaceTime or a phone call between each other. Put speakerphone you know down and and you, it works pretty well. I was pretty impressed by some of the latency. There's one mini game where they're, they're hacking, quote unquote hacking mini game, where you're supposed to use the, the controller to keep it fixed on a moving circle. So the person in VR has to aim their device, right? Aim it at a circle and, and dodge other circles, other blips on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and those other blips, that movement is actually controlled by the person on the tablet. So I'm playing a mini game of, of dodge the blips, and, and you're I'm playing a mini game. Trying to say locked on your, your thing, which is moving around, and I have no idea where you're going to move next. So it's actually challenging on both sides and rewarding on both mm. sides uh, as we're playing it and yelling at each other, oh no, keep it moving, move, move there. And so it really encourages you to have this back and forth. I found that if I get, uh, expected too much of you to know where things were, I wasn't helping you. There was, and so you have to keep on feeding that info. Yes, and, and sometimes it's not enough yeah. because the person in VR, their life is at stake, right? Because there's these soldiers everywhere who are doing to shoot them if they see you. And, and you were telling me as the hacker, safe at home, yep. just go, go down the stairs. And I'm like, well, go left, go right, which way should I go? And so there is, you do learn to communicate more and you as the hacker have the ability to give waypoints and that can become handy. And the, the Levels do get harder and harder. We haven't mm -hmm. actually finished. We've gotten quite far through the game, and the levels are... I'm glad to see that they're different from the last one, that the environments themselves are, have some differences. Um, but the, the actual energy of the levels, they get a little bit faster paced, and I, I've been enjoying it. I, I think when we think about VR games, we always ask ourselves, did this game need VR? Yeah. And you can't have asymmetrical games without VR, of mm. course. Uh, but here, because the way you experience the game, the same content, so differently. I'm looking at blips on a blueprint, right. and for you, you're in the room with those those blips, which are security guards. Yes, uh, that that difference in, in a shared experience really helps a game like this. Um, I, I wish there was six degrees of freedom. I wish the VR experience was a little more compelling by itself. Me too. Um, but it's it's a definitely a unique thing for for the go. And if you're sitting next to the person playing. You do kind of need the headset just for the privacy aspect. Yeah. So that you can't peek and see what the other person sees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so that's Covert. It's out now. Now, the other new software uh, that came out for the Go, it's, it's not a game. It's a piece of productivity software. <laughs> it's called Virtual Desktop. And we, we've had this on the Rift. We've had this on Steam for, for you know, Vive and everything else. And it's been good there. A lot of people really like this in order to access everything that's on your computer, but in VR. Um, on, when you're tethered, for, for, it doesn't make quite as much sense to me because you're at your computer. Yeah. Um, on the go, however, you can be not only somewhere else in your house, maybe you're out sitting on a couch or somewhere else, or maybe you're lying in bed and you just want to lay down and use your computer up on the screen, you can actually be away from home. It actually works quite well as a remote desktop client in order to access your home computer from anywhere on the internet. You just have to open up a few ports on your router in order to let the traffic through. And we'll put those ports at the bottom of this video if you want to do it yourself. But it's actually quite good at that. The latency is surprisingly low. I'm not so certain that you can play every game under the sun with this amount of latency. but. It's great for just accessing your computer and accomplishing tasks when you're away from it. And we've seen virtual desktop software for VR in a bunch of different formats, right? Oculus 
on the Oculus uh, home desktop experience, you can pull up and like, this is an easy way for you to, like you said, access and do some file management, click some things without having to take your headset off. Yeah. Here, it being a remote desktop alternative, how is that better than just pulling out your phone and using a remote desktop app on your phone? Well, I, I don't actually run a remote desktop on my phone. I used to, but uh, ever since I you know I got the version of Windows that doesn't have that built in, I haven't taken the time to install like a VNC client or whatever Chrome add-ons that I want to put on. This is literally, you download a, s a server software for this, and it just works. Whenever I travel, I take my Go with me. Mm. And so it's just automatic that, that, that I have that, and it's actually much more convenient to you to put on the headset than to look at my phone, because the Obviously, the, the resolution you're going to get in the headset is not what you would get sitting at your desktop, but it's good enough, and it feels like I'm at a desktop. On Plus, my, on my you have phone, your controller. It's tiny. The controller, which is the, the laser pointer, right. is the analog for your mouse. Yes. And so interactions, selecting files. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you can touch screen on your phone, but being able to see a monitor that's a fairly big widescreen monitor mm -hmm. in that virtual environment and click around, um, it's, it's a little more immersive and a little more efficient as a remote desktop. You have a left click and a right click. And you can click and drag around. It doesn't currently support multiple monitors, but he's working on that. Mm. You won't be able to see both at once because this lacks the horsepower to do that, but you will be able to select between the two of them, which I think will be you know, very handy for people like me that have multiple monitors. You also have a gamepad control. And like I said, there is latency. Now, I mean, there's people who have, swear, have sworn they've played it at home on a five gigahertz wireless network and they can't detect it. Like they can play a video game stream from their PC right. to another part of their house. Yes. Now me, I don't I have been on a five gigahertz network. I can detect the latency. Like it's not mm. good enough. Like I have it's not immediately apparent, but if you try to play even a pinball game that requires like instantaneous flipping action, mm -hmm. it's late. It's delayed. You can feel that. Uh, yeah. So I mean for some games that don't require, you know, split second Response uh, times, responses, yeah. then maybe it's going to work great for that. Yeah. And so technically speaking, yes, you can actually connect a Bluetooth headset gamepad to this headset that appears as a local Xbox gamepad on cool. your PC, which is actually kind of pretty cool. Which means if you run something like a big screen yeah. on uh, Steam, Works you can fine. load those games up. And the nice thing is because on the headset, all it's doing is getting data and decoding video, mm -hmm. uh, the, the rendered environment around it is running at 72 hertz. Right, and it's at, at those environments are pretty nice. There's a variety of them. Uh, there's theaters, as you would expect. There are voids, which are the ones that allow you to, there's empty spaces, and you can drag the screen onto the ceiling, change its size, its distance, and its curvature. Uh, there's also, my favorite happens to be the computer desktop one, which puts the, uh, the image onto a monitor that's right in front of you. Yeah. And the environment itself is nice, you know, high quality rendering and uh, that one I just seem to get the most pixels out of that one it gets it closest to my face it's more like sitting at my computer mm -hmm. desktop mm -hmm. um, so that that's my personal favorite but it doesn't have nice. adjustments where you can move the virtual screen. not the environments okay. no only in the voids can you actually move the screen around Got it. Um, in the environments of course here we are three off yeah. and we are stuck in one position well this type of development will have dividends paid forward with the release of quest next year theoretically he already says it's going to support it and so hopefully this kind of software in a six off environment will be even more compelling mm -hmm. uh, so it is the end of the year and if you do have an oculus go if you just got one uh, we have some recommendations for you some games that we've been playing a lot of the games that the experiences that we've spent our most time in yeah in Go. Yeah, there's a lot of lists out there. Uh, our taste might not be exactly the same, but the games that I have spent the most time in are, to me, very obvious. One is Coaster Combat, which is funny. It's like one of the first games that Oculus had us try when we first got the thing, and it's still one of the better games on there. You sit in a minecart, and you roll through a um, procedurally generated roller coaster that is in one of four environments. And there's like a pirate one, and a spooky house one, and a big mountain one. And, and it's, it's a blast. You roll through this environment, and you aim with your 3 doff remote. You're just rotating it around, and your hand exists in the game, and you're shooting various targets. You're shooting uh, you know, ghosts or pirates or coins, and you're trying to collect everything as you go through. Uh, the replayability is good because it does generate new tracks, and there's a high score list that you can compete. My mom, dude, she's number two now. Wow. In the world. On one of the tracks. <laughs> no, in the game. In the game. That's in the insane. whole game. Wow. So yeah, she, I got her to go, and that's where she spends her time, and I'm happy she's happy. Um, the other game that, uh, that I um, have really enjoyed is Racket Fury. Uh, now, that's a, that's a ping pong game, mm -hmm. um, and it has no right to feel this sixth off 
as it does. Because when you swing this racket around, it really does feel like you are moving it through space. Like, so you bring a lot of to it yourself. Of course you have to, well, I think that's the problem, is that people will naturally bring things to, yeah. to this kind of game. When they pick up a three-doff controller, they'll you think it does this. Move. Yeah. And this game does a great job, however it does it, of imagining where you're probably moving it through space. And you can get into it and swing and put good spin on it based on this kind of roll and backspin. And like there are going to be better six-doff ping pong games, but this is surprisingly good for a three-doff game. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time in there. You go through the different bosses, and you you know they get harder and harder. Uh, you can learn how to game it. Like you'll never win on the first return. You just kind of get to get a few returns in there. But it's good. It's got a limited kind of aesthetic. You're in the space battling robots and stuff. But it's a it's a fun game, and I've really enjoyed that one. The two games I'd recommend, uh, one is a cross-platform game, or it's on multiple platforms, initially launched on PSVR, but it's Thumper, and it is the, kind of the perfect sit back and enjoy being in VR, mm -hmm. uh, music rhythm on a track game uh, for the Oculus Go. Uh, runs really well, um, and it is on a flat screen as well, you could play it on a PC, but in VR, that environment, the music, all surrounds you. Definitely recommend playing with headphones uh, and uh, really high frame rate, really smooth. Uh, it's one of those things if you get into a rhythm yeah. playing the game, um, then it's, it's like Tetris, but for music. It's games. a lot like Tetris. And there's, there's a lot of game there. Like you can unlock level after level and go back and try to perfect them. Mm -hmm. And they launched without gamepad support, but they added that later. So if you have a Bluetooth gamepad, that now works with that. Yep. And then the other game is, it's Catan. So that was a Catan. That's actually my go-to game on the Oculus Go. Even playing AI, I, I like, I love Catan. Yeah. And here, I don't have to set up the board. Right. And I can, I can rage quit. And I can, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it takes, I think, a little bit getting used to with the three dot controller, yeah. all the trades of, mm -hmm. of the cards. But it does have cross-platform with the Rift version of Catan. And uh, there are still players there right now. So if you like Catan, or you want to see what board games are like, in VR, even with 3 off, that's what I recommend. We play Monopoly, like on the iPad at home, because that just removes all the mundane stuff. You have to manage the money and the properties and the trading. Yeah. I imagine playing in Catan on the VR, like games don't last an hour, do they? Are they, are they, they feel like it. They can be at least <laughs> half an hour. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's still a time yes. commitment. Yes. Wow. Yeah, right now, just the, the base game, no expansions yet, um, but hopefully the developer gets to add that in the future. So uh, if you have other favorite games for the go, please post them in the comments below. We'd love to check them out. And this is all kind of building up to next year's release of the Oculus Quest. Right. Uh, and, and we're sixed off mobile wireless gaming in VR goes from there. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have more stuff to cover in VR in future episodes. Thanks for watching. Jeremy and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.